Hello and welcome to another easy cake decorating tutorial with Mrs B Bakes. Today we're going to have a look at how to make this cute pug cake topper. So to make this little pug um, decoration we're going to need um, not very much actually just some um, some white sugar paste some brown sugar paste um, I, be, I buy this pre-coloured it's actually chocolate flavoured it's lovely you can colour it yourself but it's just easier just to get a, a, a small packet I think they're 250 grams and um, the gum tragosanth as I use uh, with all models it just um, makes them dry a bit harder and makes them stand up easier okay so first off I'm going to take off um, maybe a third of the, the brown sugar paste and put that to one side to use for um, the dog's snout and um, its ears. And we are going to need a, a tiny bit of black sugar paste as well, but we'll come to that later. So the white, um, I think probably what I'm going to do is mix the brown with the white uh, to make a lighter brown colour, obviously. Don't really need to tell you that, so I'll just do that. might take a little while you just need to get an even color all the way through just knead it you can roll it out if you like I sometimes find that easier um, to roll it and then squidge it and then roll it and then squidge it so do whatever you need to do to get the two colors mixed okay so we've basically got a nice um, a nice ball of light brown icing what I'm going to do first is um, split it probably a third, two thirds, maybe a little bit more like half and half actually. Um, and first off we'll make the body. So we're going to make this quite upright just for logistical purposes um, to keep it upright. It's, it's easier rather than having it leaning forward like a dog's body normally would and having all the weight on the front legs. Okay so um, I've rolled that nicely between my palms just to make it all nice and smooth and crease free. And what I'm gonna do is roll it into um, a bit of a teardrop shape. So I'll take my hands like this and just roll it with a bit more pressure at the top than at the bottom to sort of make a elongated egg teardrop style shape. So you can see there, it's quite a nice dog's body shape. Now I'm just gonna put that down so he will sit, it's got a nice wide base so it'll sit nicely and it should stay there quite nicely. So I will now take, um, maybe, I am making this up as I go along by the way just to, uh, so if anything goes wrong I do apologise. So what I'm going to do is take off enough of here, enough of this to, um, to make the, the dog's head so it wants to be quite nice and sort of round and pudgy. So that's probably going to be about the right size for the dog's head, I would have thought. So we'll put that to one side for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this not quite in half because obviously the back, le back legs are going to be a little bit bigger than the front legs. So not quite in half. Cut that in half, not in half. Um, roll that out to, to smooth it. And then I'm going to put that to one side and cut this one in half right down the middle so you've got two legs that are going to be the same size so there's a nice sort of smooth smooth ball and what I'm going to do is just roll that between my hands again with what more pressure on one side than the other to make um, a very elongated teardrop shape so something along those lines we don't want it quite so pointy on the end so just flatten that off at the end and then I'm going to take my index finger and um, probably about two thirds of the way up start rolling with a little bit of pressure just to give a bit of a bigger end here and a smaller end at this end. Now what I'm going to do I'll put that on its side and flatten this end here because that's the bit of if you imagine when a dog sat down it's got a, a sort of a funny shaped bit at the back I'm just going to sort of fold that up and this is the dog's paw, so it looks a bit like a snail with its shell on its back. So I'm just going to push that in to make a flat paw. 
and as you can see that that sort of looks like um, a dog's leg would when it was sat down so I'm just going to take my sharp knife and just put some I'll do it this way actually put a couple of lines in there to make the little dog's foot so that is going to go it's going to place right on the side of the dog and that looks like it's little leg so we'll do the same on the other side just quickly to show you how that goes again index finger roll a little bit there flatten that bit out fold it over flatten this bit out and then indent see how quick and easy that is and again just stick that on the side okay so now for the, um, the front paws I'm just gonna cut this one in half um, what I'm gonna do this is gonna be slightly inverted so I'm gonna have the thin end at the top and the thicker end at the bottom so I'll just roll this out as I did before with more pressure on one side than the other and then I'm going to, with my little finger, because I don't want it to be quite such a big indentation, I'll just indent down here for sort of the dog's wrist, almost this, this part here. Um, so fold that up, squish the paw back a little bit, and we'll just sort of put that against the dog to see what it looks like. Think I'm happy with that so I'll do the other one before we mark any feet in so this one again with the little finger to make an indentation fold the leg up squish it back and then we put that line that up there and again with the sharp knife just make two little indentations where the dog's paw would be and then we have the dog's we have the dog's body more or less done so what I'm going to do now is just take a little bit of the dark brown fondant just a little bit not too much so maybe a um, pea-sized amount and I'm going to make a tiny little tail to go around the back so I'm just going to on the mat it's a little teardrop shape so I'm going to roll it out pushing down on one side more than the other so you've got a long thin sort of cone shape and I'm going to I might just make that a little bit longer so that we can curl it round because pugs have sort of little curly tails don't they so I'm going to sort of curl that round on itself and place that on the back of the dog there there's its funny little curly tail. So there, that's the dog's body. So the dog's head, I've already sort of rolled it out. It wants to be not quite circular, um, so not quite a rugby ball shape, so slightly oval. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just take my the, the pad of my thumb and just, uh, just push that into the front where this snout is going to go, just to make a little bit of room for the snout. So there we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a, a, a piece of the dark brown fondant, probably about the size of a Malteser. I, I like to uh, measure things according to chocolate. Um, and a third and two thirds, roughly, split that. So this bottom one is going to be sort of the bottom jaw of the dog. So I'm just going to make it crease free and um, turn it into an oval shape. But then I'm going to just pinch the sides a little bit with my fingers just to make it almost like a soft diamond shape. I'm going to press that onto the little face of the dog and just shape it as you like. So this, this two thirds that was left over, again crease free, make it into an oval but not as sharp this time. So not the soft diamond, but more, more of an oval. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna turn it to one side and use the non-cutting side of the knife just to push up into the center and bend 
down. So that's kind of almost um, his lip in the middle. And you can see we've got a nice bit to sort of go over the top of this one. And just pull that down a little bit because you sort of want the top one to kind of come over the top of the bottom one. And there we have we have the snout so I'm going to just sort of very carefully draw in mark in sort of the, the centre of the snout there so there we've got the snout so I'm just going to take um, a cocktail stick and just while it's still nice and wet just mark in a few little um, marks where the whiskers would be and now I'm going to take a tiny little bit of the black fondant and I'm going to smooth that as best you can when you've only got a tiny bit and sort of make it into a dog dog's nose shape which is a fairly random thing to say but I'm just going to stick that right on the end of his snout and sort of push it in and shape it while it's on there until I'm happy with it it's quite cute and now with another little bit of the um, dark brown fondant, what I'm going to do is just make, pugs have a, quite a squashy face, so I'm just going to make um, a tiny little sausage. I'm going to make it as thin as I can um, to sort of suit. It's going to go all the way around the outside just to sort of where the, the bottom of the mouth meets. So I'm going to just, just move his little head and roll this to make it as long as I need it, make it nice and um, evenly spaced, evenly sized, and just sort of put that around there just to give it a bit more of a squashy feel. Now, this is the only um, baking tool, cake, cake decorating tool that I'm going to use um, today, and it's just for ease to, to make the eye sockets, but um, anything, if you've got sort of the end of a clean paintbrush um, just so that it's a round shape um, I'm sure you can find something that that would be useful so I'm just going to press in but elongate so rather than a round hole I'm making a, a kind of a, an oval hole and again press in and then elongate just by wiggling which is always good use some brown to make the sort of basis because they do have sort of brown eyes um, I want two pieces about that big so I'll just squish those together and then cut this in half I always do this just to make sure that you're getting around about the same size balls as it were so just make those into oval shapes and press those into those holes see I've made the holes quite deep so that the eyes don't stick out at all um, which is quite nice is it just makes them a bit more sort of lifelike One slightly bigger than the other unfortunately um, So what I might do is just Dig this side out And just add a little bit of chocolate to it Bit more just to make it the same size as that side. So you squash that in, that's better. There we go. So that just makes it nice. And what I might do is take a little bit of white and a tiny bit of the chocolate just to because we need another little bit of sort of light brown. Pug's eyes are uh, sort of made up of different layers of colour. So again, just trying to mix that colour. doesn't matter too much because actually it's not going to be seen that much. So I'm just going to cut that ball in half. So we've got two equal sized bits. We don't need anywhere near that much actually. So I'm just going to cut one of the balls in half again. And squash those onto that first bit there. Okay, now I'm going to take 
um, a little bit of the black and cut that in half just a tiny little bit because this is kind of the pupils squash those onto there and then the tiniest tiniest bit of white imaginable so I've got quite a big bit here just to get it smooth and I'm going to pinch a tiny bit off you can see that's really, I don't know what that bit's doing there, a really tiny ball. I'm just going to cut that in half as best I can with this huge knife. And they're going to be just the little flecks in the eyes. So I'm just going to put that sort of off to one side. It just makes the eyes look quite lovely. A little bit more sort of lifelike, if you like. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, take a cocktail stick and just sort of make some little some little indentations, almost frown lines if you like, up here and around the top of the eyes. So very light, light impressions, sort of round, almost almost eyebrow marks, but they're not. So just do the same on this side. Just give the, I might just put a couple of lines down here as well, just to sort of give the impression of it, because pugs have quite liney faces, quite squashed faces. So there we go. So that's the, the little pug's face. So um, I'll just take another little bit of the brown that we had left over, and the ears are quite sort of, floppy on a pug so what I'm going to do just put him to one side again roll a ball cut it in half and I'm just going to make a sort of plump triangle and then squash it on my hand like that and this is going to be the top of the ear the bit that's attached to the body I'll make two of those so once again Make a plump triangle and then squash it. And you want to sort of attach it and then bend it over, if that makes sense. So once again, sort of attach it, well, push it on and then bend it over to make the little ears look quite cute. And then you can always just sort of shape them a little bit more if you're not happy with how round they've gone or how triangular. So then what we're going to do with this body is um, we're going to place the cocktail stick, always twist it down into the body so that you're not squashing it. And then with another cocktail stick, I'm just going to make a guide hole in the bottom of this little pug's head, just so it's easier to get it on. And then just try and make sure that this isn't too so there's your little pug. I'll just pick him up so you can see from the front. There's your little pug with his little, oops, his tail's fallen off. So we'll just make sure that stays on. But there, there's our little pug. So what I might just do, just to give him a bit more character is, and you don't need to do this, it's not necessary because obviously, you know, you might not have the colored fondant, but I'm going to grab Grab some red fondant and I'm going to uh, just make this nice and soft. Just going to make, make a little collar for this dog. Quite a nice thick collar. So roll out the sausage. Again, keeping it even like we did for this bit that went over his snout. Just keep it, try and keep it nice and even size and you can just put that round the dog's neck and there he's got a nice little collar